and we're rolling. What if you were the son of the most famous horror writer in the world? Would changing your name help you get there? Would maybe a change of medium help uh, even more to get to the top? Um, who knows? Let's explore that today. I am talking about Lock and Key by Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez. So here it is, my slipcase edition paperback of Lock and Key by Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez. Um, Joe Hill, for those of you who may not know, is um, actually uh, the pain name of one of Stephen King's uh, sons. So he is actually a horror writer as well. He writes um, novels and short stories, um, but he's perhaps better known for the Lock and Key uh, comics which he um, wrote and uh, was drawn by Gabriel Rodriguez for the full um, series, which is actually uh, a bit rare in comics. Usually you get a guest uh, artist every so often, they tend to fall behind the schedule and maybe the author will write a one-off story um, in there to give time to the main artist to, to catch up with the series and they get a guest writer to, to do a one-off story. Not the case here, in its integrity, beginning to end, all drawn by uh, Gabriel Rodriguez, Chilean uh, artist with a background in architecture. Um, so, a lot of people consider Lock and Key to be a horror tale. I don't. Um, I consider it more of a sort of dark fantasy, supernatural story rather than an outright horror, although the lines are blurry and, you know, uh, we're talking semantics at the end of the day. So here we are, the six volumes, number one, Welcome to Lovecraft, second one, Heck Games, number three, uh, Crown of Shadows, number four, Keys of the Kingdom, number five, Clockworks, and the final one, Alpha and Omega. Uh, this edition, it's beautiful, um, I bought her, I believe, uh, from Amazon for a discounted price, brand new, and it's absolutely fantastically done. Um, each issue has got a lovely cover, which is sort of text uh, textured and bas relief, uh, really nice. And I actually got the chance to meet Joe Hill and get him to sign my um, copy there. The artwork is beautiful. Uh, it reminds me a lot of um, European style drawing, uh, sort of very clear inked lines with the colour very much kept in place and uh, very detailed uh, style of uh, drawing of characters and um, landscapes uh, and so on. There's nothing fussy, uh, there's no shadows there, there is no uh, blurring, everything is very clearly drawn and aligned um, and it's very very nice but for me it feels a little bit cartoonish um, a little bit sort of I don't want to say for children um, but um, I would have appreciated a slightly more mature perhaps a slightly darker uh, style of uh, drawing for, for a story like this but it doesn't detract. It doesn't detract from the story at all. Uh, the characters are very expressive. Um, the buildings, the architecture uh, that is shown there. I mean, you can see uh, Gabriel's background there. It is beautiful and there is a consistency throughout the whole six volumes that um, fits the story well. My opinion, I would have liked it to be a bit less cartoonish. Which is why I think maybe it's not outright horror. Now, uh, Joe Hill, a very accomplished uh, horror writer, to the point where now he's got his own uh, line of comics uh, for DC, for the Black Label, which is the new label that launched last year, aimed at mature audiences. So I'd be quite interested and quite curious to see uh, what I find uh, there when I go to London over Christmas and can get my hand on some originals. So the story follows uh, the Locke family after uh, dad um, has died and we follow the three Locke children 
as they move back to the old uh, family manor in this town called Lovecraft. Now, that name really irks me. I think it's a major distraction and, and a bit of a blunder there. I mean, Howard Phillips Lovecraft is such an iconic horror writer from the 20s uh, that his name is going to instantly bring back the association to the world and the mythos he created which is not really at all part of the story here I mean I mean Lovecraft himself he was from Massachusetts which is where the kids uh, moved to in, in the story but, but I think it was an unnecessary name drop there I don't know if it was a homage uh, if it were or homage however you pronounce that or uh, a, a purpose reference into the world that is hinted at by, by that but I, I think um, that, that was a mistake in my opinion so we follow the three children as they settle into th th their new life in the new town and they explore the family manor and the books are called Lock and Key because obviously we follow the Lock family and throughout the house there are hidden these keys that open doors to different realms and they grant different powers uh, and it's a very interesting concept so for instance you have the ghost key so when you open the door well, a certain door with the ghost key it allows you to leave your body behind and um, fly out in ghost form um, there's another key which is the head key which literally allows you to open your head and look inside your emotions, your feelings, your memories and take stuff in and out of your head so quite a unique clever idea that takes you in, in a very interesting path so whilst the boys are exploring the house we have a major um, overarching plot that I don't want to spoil but um, it relates to the kid's father's death and events in the past and how we go full circle um, in the story. There's a really interesting um, villain, for want of a better word, uh, that interacts with uh, the people in the town and, and the kids themselves. Um, and we follow the kids with their struggles with settling in at new school, um, exploring the, the house and how they're dealing with with the father's death, so the older brother has to step up and be the family man now, it's a bit of a cliche, but it is well done um, it feels natural um, mum is obviously getting over the, the trauma and she may have some issues with uh, alcohol and, and the younger kid, uh, the younger kid both is, is one of the, perhaps the main character that, that we follow and we see events from his perspective, he's very innocent, very naive um, the one that gets into the most trouble while exploring the the lock mansion so really good story not necessarily horror but it's got some supernatural sort of demonic elements to it really good uh, interesting idea with the whole uh, powers granted by the keys around the manor um, and a very satisfying ending I think very clearly Joe Hill had a perfect notion of where he wanted to start the story, where he was going to go to and how it was going to end and and you get a sense of a unit of work that is split over uh, six volumes but it carries very cohesively throughout I mean I read them back to back one after the other as soon as I finish them because it just lends itself to that I like my comics to read full stories um, and with this one uh, principally it was ju just that, it's a whole story that you've got to read beginning to end uh, like a book uh, so sort of celebrating Halloween I suppose just gone uh, really really recommend Lock and Key I think there are rumours out there that a Netflix uh, show may be coming based on the story um, there's a lot, of go a lot of those going around uh, these days a lot of uh, comic series have been translated into um, television shows and rightly so I think some of the best writers at the moment are in comics I mean we've had Preacher we've had The Boys um, Lock and Key is rumoured 
The Walking Dead has been going for, for nine seasons. So there's, there's a lot uh, happening in, in comics at the moment that I would like to see more turn into, into the TV. So yeah, uh, leave me your comments, uh, subscribe, tell me what you think. Uh, if you disagree, I would like to hear uh, from you and tell me why. And then I'll be more than happy to point out to you why you're wrong. <laughs> uh, thank you, take care, see you next time, bye.